Jumping into the number five spot of the top five best productivity slash gaming mice is the Razer Pro Click, coming in at a price tag of $99. If you want to check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's talk about the Pro Click. This is a large ergonomic right-handed productivity mouse from Razer. It's literally branded as a productivity mouse. Its best attributes here is the in-hand comfort and the overall quality of the build. There's faux metal accents all over the mouse that make it look pretty high end, and the injection molding on the left and right is very comfortable for prolonged usage. All very good things for a productivity mouse. But what about its performance? Well, the Razer uses a 5G optical sensor, which is the biggest benefit over something like Logitech's MX Master. This has a legitimate like gaming oriented sensor. But let's talk in-game performance. While this is a big and fairly heavy mouse, it's a lot lighter than you'd expect for this size at only 106 grams. This is still very whippable and quite accurate for sniping. Now for productivity, this is great for long editing sessions, Photoshop, or just writing notes and retrieving files for a PowerPoint. The larger size and ergonomics make for pretty much no fatigue. With my normal hand size, all fingers can easily rest on the mouse without touching the mouse pad. However, the high price tag here and lack of features when compared to the competition put this in the number five spot. Even though it's a good mouse, it's just not quite as good. To further that point, there just aren't as many buttons to be able to customize, and for productivity, that can be very important. This continues into the scroll wheel, where it's very nice and tactile, it actually feels pretty dang good, but there's no freewheel here, and when compared to the competition, almost all of them have it. So the overall best use case for the Razer Pro Click is people who want to game and do productivity with a larger, comfortable mouth that does neither perfectly, but prioritizes comfort really over everything because this is a very comfortable mouse. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which is the glorious Model I, coming in at a price tag of $59.99. This mouse really impressed me. I did not expect to like it as much as I do. The Model I presents a shape closer to the desk in its apex, presenting a more aggressive gaming center grip than something like the Pro Click. This mouse is still quite comfortable, but doesn't have that ring and pinky finger support like the Pro Click does. So adjusting your ring and pinky finger, pulling them back is necessary. Necessary. That being said, the biggest benefit here with the Glorious Model I is that this is the most gaming focused and centered mouse on the list while still being an ergonomic mouse that's great for productivity. This really makes no concessions about its size as it only weighs 69 grams. For the sensor, this is using Glorious's Banff sensor, and in game, you make no compromises due to its size. This is easily flickable due to the weight, it's very precise, and the clicks feel very crisp much more so than the Pro Click, which honestly I expected more from as it's, well, a Razer mouse. It's also ironic because of the name Pro Click and it doesn't have like Pro Clicks. I don't know. Now, transversely, when using this for productivity, the Model I has some big benefits, such as three side buttons on the left, where typically there are only two. That's nice for all the customization and programmability. There is also an additional paddle there. This is great for all sorts of productivity, obviously because of the customization and the comfort. That being said, the scroll wheel here is definitely where this leaves something to be desired, with okay tactile bumps, it's definitely a little bit mushy when compared to others on the list. Now for customization, you can use Glorious's core software and that allows you to customize all the buttons on the mouse, set up macros, and you can even customize the RGB, which I will say looks very good, but that's pretty typical of Glorious. Now the best overall use case for the Glorious Model I is those who game about 70 to 80% of the time, but then that other 20 to 30% of the time they really want a good productivity mouse. This is very centered on gaming and you're really not making any compromises being a bigger mouse. However, if you're gonna be doing more productivity, like more 50 to 70% of the time, so flip the opposite, there are better mice on the list. So with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which is the Logitech G502X. This one was updated significantly and it's great. This comes in at a price tag of $59.99. At that price point, you get a tried and true design and shape. This design has been out for almost decades, plural now. The thumb rest is very comfortable in hand and the palm bump mixed with the location of the left and right click sits pretty much perfectly in my hand. Now the right side of the mouse 
Follow suit with the Model I as you have to pull back that ring and pinky finger as it kind of dips down. So if you don't, if you just fully extend your hand, you're gonna touch the mouse pad. So that makes it a little bit less comfortable as you don't have that resting room that you do on something like the Pro Click. That being said, the gaming performance here is also solid. This has Logitech's Hero 25K sensor, which is like as good as you're really gonna get at that level, nothing is really better. Everything's just kind of equal. This newer version of the G502 has a much lower weight here coming in at only 89 grams and that is impressive. This makes for significantly better gaming performance than the previous generation. Playing FPS games such as Battlefield or COD are not quite as good as the Model I but so much better than the last G502 generation. However, when compared to the Model I, the productivity here is a significant bump over the Model I. The amount of programmable buttons here is enormous. There is a very well-placed paddle, two side buttons on the left, and then two more buttons next to the left click. In addition to this, you have a button that changes the scroll wheel between an extraordinarily, and I mean extraordinarily good, tactile bump for that scroll wheel or a free wheel. It's Frickin' phenomenal and so satisfying. You also then get an additional programmable button behind that. I seriously cannot overdo how good that freaking tactile bump scroll wheel is its god tier. I think it may be the best one I've ever used. In addition, the software here is very easy to use and all the programmable buttons are easy to change. You can do macros and all sorts of things. Even set buttons to open up different programs. So if you need to quickly open up a different application, you can do it by just literally clicking a button. It's very cool. Now, the best overall use case for the G502X is a 50-50 split between gaming and productivity, doing PowerPoints, editing videos, Photoshop. Half and half is really what this thing is optimal for. It's got tons of buttons, but it can still game well, not quite as well as the Model I, and that's why it makes this a perfect 50-50. But what if you're doing productivity even more of the time? Well, that leads us into the number two spot, which is the lot Tag MX Master 3S. Coming in at a price tag of $99.99. This is the most expensive one on the list, but it is also by far the most comfortable mouse on the list. The quality of materials here is phenomenal. This uses a soft, almost rubberized textured feel with these beautifully sculpted looking lines and angles on the thumb rest, then following through to the bottom right side. In hand, while yes, this feels big, this allows for essentially zero fatigue while making precise clicks over and over, such as when editing photos, videos, making PowerPoints, editing notes. This is exceptionally comfortable, not even mentioning how sick this looks, which I do think this looks amazing. But let's talk about performance. This uses the dark field sensor, which for gaming is actually surprisingly accurate. You can definitely game on this. Well, yes, it's heavy. And yes, it's definitely the worst gaming mouse on the list. And it's not even really considered a gaming mouse, but because of the high precision and tons of other features like being able to use this on clear glass, which is really impressive. This is a very advanced sensor and gaming on this, you can definitely still do. In fact, my first mouse that I really bought myself was a Logitech MX Master 2, and that is not even close to as good as this 3S. This 3S made so many advancements over that, and it's still very doable to game on this mouse. While not optimal, you can definitely do it. If you prioritize productivity over gaming, but you still wanna do it, this is what you're gonna be looking at. Every button on this mouse is in the exact perfect place. Your thumb rests on a gesture button on the bottom of the thumb rest, and immediately above that, you have the side button clicks that are perfectly positioned, so you do not have to move your thumb back and forth. You can click them just by using different parts of your thumb. That's very nice. Above this, you have a side scroll wheel, which is amazing for video editing, specifically as it makes scrolling through your timeline a breeze. The scroll wheel here can also change between tactile and free wheel, like on the G502X. And while it's not insanely tactile like the 502X was, it is super refined, whisper quiet, precise, and absolutely never fatiguing. The mouse has this sense of quietness, but tactileness that's not crisp, but still extremely satisfying. It's something you have to use in person. It's not like many other mice that are available, but dang, is it really satisfying to use. Now the left and right click are the same story here. Being nice and tactile without really an audible click. They're almost like a silent switch, but with zero mushiness. Now I could talk for 20 more minutes on all the features that this mouse has, but I'll leave you with one more. If your mouse dies unexpectedly and you still need to get some work done, you can take a USB-C, plug it in for one minute, and that will give you three hours of battery usage. Now if that's not productivity and efficiency, 
I don't know what is. For button customization, Logitech's app is great. You can customize all the buttons you want, along with the scroll wheels, gesture buttons, there's a lot here. Now the best overall use case for the MX Master 3S is a balance more skewed towards productivity, where 70 to 80% of the time you're doing productivity tasks, and then maybe 20 to 30% of the time you are gonna be gaming. This is also definitely a mouse that is so good that you might even consider getting a very, very small lightweight gaming mouse and then getting this strictly for productivity. That's actually what I do. But if you want the most balanced and best value mouse, well, that'll lead us into the number one spot which is the Razer Basilisk V3 coming in at a price tag at this time of only $49.49. Yeah, by far the best value and also the best balance for I think most of you. The Basilisk V3 strikes the perfect balance shape for comfort, productivity, and gaming. The shape is very ergonomic, but not even close to as big as the MX Master or the Razer Pro Click. The injection molding on the left and right side is very comfortable as well as being very grippy due to the design on that right side. I'm able to only slightly pull back my pinky finger with my ring finger still being fully extended which helps enormously with long term comfort and fatigue not to mention grip. Now this uses Razer's 26K optical sensor which is like a very very high end gaming sensor making the game performance insanely accurate. While this is heavier at 101 grams due to the grip I find there to be very little difference between this and the G502X in real world performance even though the G502X is now substantially lighter. This is an incredibly enjoyable mouse to game on, but the extremely impressive part is the perfect balance that this mouse is able to achieve with productivity. There is a paddle on the left side just above the very comfortable thumb rest with two additional side buttons. Then you have your crisp and tactile left and right clicks, and like the 502X, this has a tactile scroll wheel that can become a free wheel. This for me is a real must for the real productivity space. Button customization is enormous with macros and pretty much everything you'd want inside the Razer Synapse app. But what makes this mouse so special is the grip in hand is comfortable. The game of performance is high. It looks crazy. It feels good. And then you have all the customization and the ergonomics just work. Oh yeah, and then the price is the cheapest on the list. The best overall use case for the Razer Basilisk is a 50-50 split between gaming and productivity Basically meaning you can't go wrong with this. It's so good at both being incredibly enjoyable to flick around in game in FPS games, but then switching to doing long editing sessions or a workflow. It's exceptionally comfortable and highly customizable. And for 90% of you, this is the one you should get. But again, if you want to check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But this is a consumer tech review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.